Hello once again, it's Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher, and thanks for watching my videos and follow me on Instagram under Mr. Pete 222. Now this video is about micrometers and you think, oh no, not another one on micrometers. So uh, to start with, I'm going to measure this uh, dowel rod here with my Metatoyu uh, electronic uh, uh, micrometer here. So, oh, that's right. This never works when I really want it. That's right, I remember. I hate these things. You know what? This micrometer always works. And I want to talk about digital micrometers, but mechanical digital, like this stare at number 216. And you see me that use this all the time, and I certainly know how to read a standard micrometer, and I have 50 of them, and they read to the tenth of a thousandth. But that's not what I really want to talk about. I want to talk about these 216s, and I have one in a, in a 2 inch as well. So, the reason I like this, in the video I can take a reading and then I hold it up to the camera. You've seen me do that to verify a dimension. And I, I love that feature, and there's no batteries, and there's no fiddling around. But the reason I'm telling you about this is that I recently went over to my friend uh, Russ's house, and he is the man that was the auto teacher, and I worked with him for many years, and he gave me this set of sterrets here. Remember, his uncles gave that to him, and they accepted that in lieu of a rent payment from uh, Deadbeats in Chicago that had no money, but they had merchandise, and maybe it was stolen, I don't know. So, uh, back to this uh, 216, so now I'm at Russ's house in his basement, and he recently had four bypasses, and you know, he hasn't been feeling well, I'm not so sure, he doesn't think he's dying, but he's not, but he's downsizing a little, and he's showing me all of the tools he's laid aside, mainly mechanical tools, because he taught auto shop, for his uh, son-in-law. But as he opened these drawers in the red craftsman toolbox, there was uh, some micrometers. And uh, there was one of these, a 216, and a, an older brown and sharp, but not uh, satin chrome. You could not have given it to me. So I looked at that stuff, then I went home. But later that night in bed, I was thinking, man, he'll never use that again. He never did do machine work. Uh, so I said, I'm going to see if he wants to sell that. And so next time I saw him, I said, hey, Russ, you want to sell that uh, that digital steroid? I really uh, like that. And he's, he said, well, he, he kind of brushed me off. So in the meantime, I had to go and see my brother-in-law, and I told you that when I came back, this is a couple weeks ago, he had given me this micrometer. That's in another video. And in in this, uh, this, he had worked at Caterpillar, so I don't want to talk about that. But those nice steroid boxes. Yeah, that's right, two and a half cups of coffee. So anyway, I came back from, uh, oh, when I did that, I went to, to that screw machine shop. That video's coming up in, in Rockford, so watch for that. But I came in, and here is this sitting on my kitchen counter that Russ had brought over. And I, So then I texted him. I said, how much do you want for that? And he says, you know, it's yours, you know, because he said, you give me all kinds of things. So there it is. Another 216 in the original box with the paperwork, and there is the number. So I thank you, Russ, for that. And this micrometer, and I marked that Russ, really is the subject of this video. That sure was a long intro, wasn't it? But let me stop now and talk a little bit about sterile tools. Well, that's what I've been doing. This is the 1990. Sterrett catalog, so that's what, 28 years old, and I loved that when they came out with the spiral binding, because by that time this catalog was pretty darn thick. But, this was the time when th these digital micrometers were, were pretty popular, the mechanical ones. So there you could buy the head. This is the 216. And there's a whole page of those. I didn't realize there was such a big variety and all the sizes. And notice that these are black framed. Well, so is this one for that matter. But even the one inch here is black framed. And some of these are metric as well. But looking farther back here, there was, well, there was one other one here. I guess I lost the page. But apparently digital tools were just coming in in, uh, in 1990, and this is really the only page showing that. 
And I don't even exactly recognize that one. That was probably one of the very earlier ones. So at this time in 1990, mechanical digital was, uh, was very popular. And, and they still are to me. I think they are so awesome. Several years back, Mitutoyo, who, by the way, never mastered what kind of foam to use. Look at that. I've got more tools that, that, that got ruined by that horrible foam, but yet this foam here is a little bit sturdier. There was foam up here. That all deteriorated. Now I've got to blow this out. Sometimes it sticks to the tools, but anyway, man, can I get sidetracked. This is a metric Mitutoyo, 0 to 25 millimeters. But at school, I had some that Mitutoyo called the Kamba mic, and I thought that was so neat because some of them would read metric here and imperial here, or vice versa. They would measure uh, imperial here and metric up here. That was pretty awesome. And some of the other brands of mics had scales here so that if I was going to say if the batteries failed, you could read it up here, but, the, but they would read uh, both digitally and, uh, do, I guess we're going to call this analogly or what, whatever it was. So, And this one from Russ is out of calibration. Why that line is way over there, I don't know. But when I zeroed this out, you can see that it doesn't come to zero. It comes to one. So really that's what this whole video is about. I'm going to recalibrate this. I've never done it before but uh, and I hope it's successful and, uh, and I hope you had a few chuckles about everything I talked about here for the last five minutes. So I'll put this stuff away and we'll get some tools out and start to work on this model 216. Wonderful finish on this, isn't it? You know, at first here, I was a little ashamed that I'm not able to photograph this without reflections. Can you see that? But I shouldn't be ashamed, because even at Starrett, they couldn't do it in that picture. Look at that. So I'm no more of an idiot than whoever took that picture. Now, not long ago, in one of my this and that's, uh, one Mr. Tom McAllister from uh, Alabama uh, gave me a bunch of watch repair tools. Do you remember that? So I got out his tweezers. I don't know what I'll all need, but here's a complete set of screwdrivers to, in the tiny sizes. So that's what I'm going to use. So, uh, And that was uh, Mr. Tom McAllister down in Alabama. I said that, but thank you, Tom. And, and I'm wondering if Tom McAllister is uh, related to Billy Joe McAllister. You know, that's the one that jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. So let me get out a little screwdriver here and remove this cover. Well, I got one screw out, and I got to be careful not to lose these. If I do, I got to throw the whole kit and caboodle away. Lucky I got my Optivisor on because I can barely see this. I'm a 74-year-old shaky man. Look at how my hands tremble. I'll lay that over in my little magnet deal. And now you can see how it's made. And I gotta clean the the anvils out here with a nice clean piece of paper here so that it'll zero out. Like that. You see these other two little screws? Of course you do. I'm going to loosen those up and there's elongated slots there. Well, all slots are elongated when that was redundant. So I'll loosen those up and I'll drop this whole unit just a little bit away from the gear in there. There's a gear. This is built something like a speedometer, a Sterrett speed, spe <laughs> speedometer. As I turn the thimble here, there's just a little catch. I can feel a little clicking, but the other, that two-incher is the same way, so I don't know 
if there's a little damage to one of the gears or there's a little dirt in there or what but I really don't want to take the whole thing apart I'm just going to try to correct this I doubt that I can make that go away but I can just feel right there a little resistance and I have to put a little more pressure on it to turn it past that you can see how they probably wanted to get away from this delicate mechanism and go electronic these really I think were just an uh, a stopgap intermediate method between standard micrometer which I showed you a minute ago here and the electronic age. No batteries. Alright. Get your fat hands out of the way you fool. Is what you're thinking. I can hear you say that. Just loosen them up and then I can drop this whole thing away maybe a little more did you see that move down and away and now it's disengaged is what it is but what I was forced to do here since the the one was already in place and these are all geared together so I didn't want to have to turn it over a hundred thousand miles to get there so I backed it off to one inch and I've got a standard in the anvil and everything cleaned just so and held just right so I'm essentially zeroing it out here or I should say one inching it out at this point so I'll bring this little row here to zero as such and now I'm going to raise the whole unit here carefully and methodically and engage the gear and tighten the two little screws and hardly see this Now let's see before I put the cover on. Now let me and there it is at zero. Now I'll put the little cover on. Can you hear? Henry coming down the stairs. Again, I want to make sure it's nice and clean. And it zeroes out nice. And on the little cover goes. Two tiny little screws. And we got a visitor that's moving up here now. Do you people get these where you live? They're horrible. They're not ladybugs. Some kind of little beetle, but they stink horribly. I could have sent this in to stir it. But it would probably cost more than a new one. But wait, there's more. Where's the little line? You see, there should be a little line here, like there is on this one. So, and it is there, but for some inexplicable reason, it's clear around there. So we take the genuine little sterret wrench, which is a spanner, and I'm going to spin that around until that line is about where I want it. Like that. But wait. Now the thimble doesn't line up with the line. How am I going to do that? I don't remember minutes ago if I used the correct terminology or not, but this is the thimble out here and this is the barrel. I was turning the barrel with the little wrench, so 
I might have misspoken there. But anyway, what I had to do was to loosen this screw. And Bubba has been there before me. And I had a heck of a time here, and that's probably why. I had to grind a screwdriver to fit. And uh, Bubba used whatever was available. So it was a little bit buggered, but I did manage to get it loose, and it was tight. But th the thing now is that I have to get the thimble, now that that is loose, uh, loosened up from the spindle. So I will tap on it probably with the wooden hammer handle and it will come a little loose. So let me do that off camera. I don't want you to see anything that looks too crude. Well that didn't take much. I just tapped it with the hammer handle. My name crudely stamped in there from when I was 16. But notice now that the thimble I'll hold on to the spindle here. See, it turns loose, so what I'm going to do again is move, clean this again, you don't, you know, you can't be careful enough. I'm going to clean that again, the anvils, <laughs> and then bring it up to zero. Then I will bring the thimble around to one of the lines to line up with the index there on the barrel and it doesn't matter which one although probably the trademark should be away I'm just guessing so I'll get it right where I want it now and tighten this so that completes the calibration and I really did three things here I zeroed out the digits I zeroed out the barrel that is I brought that line up to where I wanted it and then I zeroed out the thimble this was probably unnecessary because that's got nothing to do with the price of tea in China. But there my secondary stare at number 216 is calibrated correctly and from now on in my videos when you watch me use my uh, 216's you won't really know which one I'm using but hope that helped you if you have one of these 216's out here to bring it back into order. Hope you enjoyed the video, and this, in fact, is Tubal Cain saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video.